Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Thomas Table Talks. This is Richard Thomas and I'm Tiffany Thomas. And we're with the Lionheart Institute podcast. And we're excited that you came in and dialed in with us today. We've got some exciting things that we're talking about that are really going to help the mental well-being of our audience today. I know it sure has been a benefit to me as we've talked about it and thought about it and meditated on it and tried to get clear on it because there is so much anxiety in the world that we live in today. So much yeah. depression, so much mental unwellness. I don't know if that's the right term or not, but <laughs> mental instability where people are hot and cold and kind of all over the place. And really what we want to do is, is successful people, people that are living a good life, the life that we should be living, mm -hmm. is we should be somewhat neutral in the sense of the world in chaos. Right. We should somewhat, as Russell Wilson would kind of point out in, in his TED Talks and his mindset training, we want to learn to get to a place that's neutral. Not too high, not too low, not overwhelmed, not in a place where we think about three quarters, as he would talk about, of negative performance. Mm -hmm. um, we want to talk about the moment we have right now, right. what we're living in, mm -hmm. the situation that we have, and the opportunity that we have, not to dwell on the past, whether it was good or bad, but to really focus on what comes next. What is right now that I can control? Mm -hmm. What is right now that I can excel in? And listen to me, uh, Lionheart, if you will focus on what you can control, you can have an amazing life. There are so many things that are outside of our sphere of control, Tiffany. But if we will grab and hold on to the things that we can control, mm -hmm. our lives can be entirely different. And I know we were in a deep talk the other day and almost a, a mindset of depression came over us as we, we yeah. dialogued about it just because we thought not only of our own life and the situations that we've had mm -hmm. to face, but thinking about family and friends and people we can't see in COVID, yeah. maybe share a little bit about where we were at in that conversation and, and uh, some of the emotions that were really driven out of that. It's really tough right now because, you know, we talked about this in one of our previous videos about, um, you know, COVID started out as kind of a positive thing, especially in our family. And we kind of found um, a way to recoup and breathe and to um, kind of regather ourselves, recenter ourselves, not only within our family, but individually. But then it kind of got worse, right? Mm -hmm. Emotionally, um, financially, mm -hmm. economically, with everything going on, sure. you know, a struggle to get by. And then, you know, we're now six months later, you know, um, we're looking at where we are today. And there, there's jobs that are reopened. Um, you know, you, you went back to work a, a, a little bit ago, and but we realize that things still aren't better, mm -hmm. you know. And I think a lot of people forget about where we are with that. That some people's jobs never wavered, right? right. During this, they, they just continued. Sure. But a lot of people's jobs didn't. Yeah. And those who have gone back to work, a lot of them aren't working full time. Mm -hmm. Those who are in commission jobs, the sales aren't there because people are either coming into their business. Different state of the world. Right, it's a completely different state. And so the income financial stability is still not there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the government isn't helping the people out right now. Bills are all still piling up. Sure. You know, so the, we were kind of sitting there thinking, you know, we know how it's affected us. Sometimes there's moments where it feels very overwhelming mm -hmm. and moments where we think, oh my gosh, like how are we gonna get out of this, <laughs> you know? We didn't ask for this to happen. You know, we we didn't do anything wrong to make this happen, sure. and here we are. And then you hear stories, obviously, of our government who's in a battle to win the White House. Right. right? And so it becomes more about winning than it is necessarily helping the people. Right. And so there's, there's chaos in all kinds of directions from mm -hmm. that perspective. Of course, there's also that mindset of preparedness, right? Yeah. That all Americans have a fiscal, financial responsibility to be prepared for situations like this but right. typically when you think about situations like that you think of it in a month right. you think of it in three months yeah i mean my goodness but stretching six months almost it looks like it's going to probably be at least a year right and you've got even if it's a small accumulation mm -hmm. you've got a trickle effect of bills growing right you've got a mountain of debt 
that mm -hmm. can, can continue to grow, and yet your income is reduced significantly. Yeah. And so, if you allow, if you don't, if you don't guard your heart, you don't guard your mind. All of a sudden, now a sense of hopelessness can begin yeah, to come in very much so. and surround you. And if you're facing that sense of hopelessness, a uh, Lionheart Institute uh, audience, it's okay. It's yeah. okay to have an overwhelming feeling that you're not going to make it. What's not okay is to live there forever, right? right? And to allow it to overcome you so much that you not you lose functionality, yeah. you lose the ability to deal with your situations, and you lose the capacity to really not only work your way out of it because most people that I've met in America at least have phenomenal work ethics whether right. they're Democrats or Republicans yeah, most people can just put their hand to the grindstone and work their tails off mm -hmm. but it's a little different situation right that sure there's going to be people that are going to get economically lucky and buy the right stock or make the right investment or they're well trained for a market like this right but for the average American that are just hard-working mm -hmm put their hand to the grindstone, they're going to be set behind. And then you have the whole reality of, of economic wealth gap yeah. in America. And so now you have a situation where the rich are getting richer, yeah. the poor are getting poorer. Yeah. Um, typically, you think about the American household. Most households, statistically, are only 90 days away from homelessness yeah. as it is. And now you have a pandemic where, thank God, you know whether you agree with Inslee or not in the state of Washington, right? He's put so many people at ease in the sense of they can't get evicted for at least right. another few months, right? Yeah. However, that doesn't put an end <laughs> right. to the accumulation of bills. Yeah, and so there's rents still keep stacking up. Bills right. keep stacking up. Those don't go anywhere. And so there's so much pressure that way, yeah. right? And really, if you allow yourself, it's easy to become overwhelmed. Tremendously. I mean, when we talk about mental health, which we touched on previously, there's a lot of depression right now, and a lot of that stems from just this economic crisis that we're all in, and especially as parents, that fear of what do we do? You know, luckily for a lot of people, a lot of people were terrified come middle of October because the eviction uh, policy was going to expire, and people were terrified that they were all going to be evicted before the holidays hit, yeah. um, because they had these mountains of debt that they weren't able to pay off because they weren't making enough income. Right. And so, thankfully, now that that is going to get people through the holidays, so that will relieve some of that feeling mm -hmm. of fear and sure. being overwhelmed. Uh, but there's still that, like as you mentioned, that debt that's still there. Right. So at the end of all this it's still there. So what do we do about that? How do you get through these moments where you, you do not see that light at the end of that tunnel? You you still see just a, a darkness that, that's just going for miles and miles and you're like, I can't breathe. How do I, how do I get out of this? And you know, that's where people start to lose hope. Yeah. And when you lose hope, then depression often sinks in, anxiety sinks in. You, you put yourself in a box. Yeah. And most people don't realize that hope deferred. Yes. Even if you are believing for it, even if you're hoping for it, even if you have a small tangible um, faith system that this hope is going to pay off, right? Right. Hope deferred and put off and put off. And now you've got people that are looking to the government, which I'll tell you this, uh, audience, we can never be in a state where we look to the government to answer all of our issues. So right? true. We need to get into a place of multiple income streams. Mm -hmm. We need to get to a place where we're... Um, financially in a, in a better state of savings and mm -hmm. I know how difficult it is and, and yeah. one of the benefits of the lesson of COVID is it's going to teach us how to live on less yes and hopefully as Americans we'll be able to take from that and begin to graft into our savings right more people will begin to learn how to live in less less than a hundred percent of their income right. which is very difficult start moving towards 90% of their income and 80% of their income, hopefully 70% of their yeah. income, where they're able to stuff some of that check yeah. into savings. And there's some great books out, out there that are not easy, right? Yeah. Um, that are not, that, that are practically somewhat difficult. Um, but if you're able to take just 10% of your income and begin to set that aside for emergencies and begin to set that aside for savings. Now, in a situation like this where you're six months in, you're gonna blow through a lot of it, right? Yeah. But it helps you build household economic wealth mm -hmm. that, that gets you through the storm, right? Well, I think, you know, one thing that we learned is 
we were very unprepared mm -hmm. for, for this kind of situation. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of times they tell you, okay, try to have, you know, a minimum of, of at least one month salary saved up or two or, I did, I, I, you know, three would mm -hmm. be preferable. Um, but most Americans don't financially have the ability to do that. Right. Um, especially when well, they don't have the discipline to do it or whatever right. the situation right. may be. So we kind of found ourselves in that situation that we hadn't really thought about that. You know, we thought about it, but not to the extent of all of a sudden now we find ourselves in a pandemic. We find ourselves going to a grocery store and there's no food. And it, it really, you know, I, th I feel like we really dramatically changed our thinking mm -hmm. um, because of this. And how do we be prepared for crisis situations that are out of your control? And then, of course, you've got the whole other side of it, right, that either were prepared, thank God for them, and, and, right. and, I, and I appreciate their discipline and hard work. Yeah. But now you have all, the whole mindset of militias rising up. Right. And now you got people stockpiling more bullets than they do bread. Yeah. And, you know, there's extremes in both situations where I believe in the Second Amendment right. I believe right. in our ability to uh, to defend ourselves mm -hmm. and so forth. But now you have whole hate groups that are beginning to emerge right. out of this chaos where people are talking about civil war and... Yeah. You know, we, we call your mom and she's concerned about people rioting and looting in her country home, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just a mindset of fear and yeah. anxiety to where many people are going to find themselves not sick from COVID, right. but sick from having heart attacks and strokes right. and disease. Yeah. One of my favorite movies in the world is uh, Any Given Sunday, <laughs> and uh, it's a great movie, yeah. right? And uh, the, the coach is looked at it and they yell at and he, the coach, the, one of the players is trying to calm him down and he says, coach, you need to relax. You're going to have a stroke. And uh, I won't, I'll save the language for right now. <laughs> but he says, mf -er, I don't get strokes. I give them. <laughs> right? Right. right? And so there's definitely a mindset shift mm -hmm. that we need to have happen in our lives. Right. Right. To where the pressure doesn't overwhelm us and crush us. Yes. Because in this situation, audience, if you're not careful, it will crush you and it will defeat you, not for a year, not during this episode of COVID, but a situation like this can crush you generationally, yes. where now all of a sudden things that would never split your family up, split your family up, right? Mm -hmm. You love your wife, but you end up leaving because of the pressure yeah. that you're under. You love your children. Mm -hmm. You would never think about abandoning your family, but now you're abandoning your family because the pressure has grown so significantly in right. your mindset and in your heart to where one of my favorite sayings is hope deferred yeah. makes the heart grow sick. Yeah. And a sick heart mm -hmm. is worse even than a sick mind because all that emotional trauma on the inside will confuse your mental thinking. It will confuse your clarity of thought. Right. And then all of a sudden, all that emotion will crush you. Talk a little bit about people that are in the world today that are being emotionally crushed. Um, what are things that they should be looking at doing? Well, you know, it's funny because I actually think back to growing up, you know, I, I grew up in church and we grew up being taught to pray for things that we need, right? So, you know, if you have a need, pray to God, you know, pray for him to answer it, to take care of it, you know, just kind of lay it all before him and ask for his help. And so, you know, I grew up kind of praying like that. That's how, you know, I always just, you know, if I had a need, I, I prayed about it, you sure. know? Made that near just said near here, clear. here you go God this is what I, this is what my needs are you know please take care of it you know because right. that's what we were taught and I remember um, when this crisis really started and you and I were praying together and it kind of hit me for a moment when I realized that throughout the entire time that we were praying you never once prayed for what we needed. You know, here I'm praying for all these things sure. that I can think of. What's all this crisis going on? And and you didn't do that. You you just thanked God and thanked and, and showed gratitude towards Him. And you never once asked Him to take care of our needs. You never once talked about that. And I remember thinking, Oh my goodness! Like this is somebody that is so different from my previous experiences with prayer that it just really shocked me and put me in awe and you know of course I think I fell in love with you even more <laughs> because you you made me realize like oh wait a minute I'm looking at the glass half empty sure and you're looking at the glass half full yeah well I, I think that that is a, a valuable perspective I think that one you can trap yourself in a mindset of defeat 
Yes. Right? And I grew up playing sports my whole life. And one of the things that I learned really, really early was never let the devil see you sweat. Right? <laughs> right. When a defense begins to think that they have you against the ropes, all of a sudden that mental confidence and that swagger that comes over the crowd can really begin to not only defeat you, but mm -hmm. drive you into the ground, right? right? And so as long as you're able to keep a perspective of hope, you have a fighting chance, right? right? And so a lot of people have seen me over the years, and I know yourself, is I've learned to become somewhat emotionally less engaged <laughs> right. during times of trauma, That's right? True. During times of stress. Now, God knows, I'll fall apart right after the ambulance <laughs> right. gets there, or right after you know, the medical attention is given. But in this situation, my my focus has always been what gets the job done. Well, right. I know complaining doesn't get it done. Mm -hmm. I know that three quarters of the people that hear me don't care, mm -hmm. right? I know the other half are glad it's not them, <laughs> right? right? Um, so they don't care, yeah. right? And so half of them are halfway or whatever the percentages are happy that it's happening to me and not to them, right? right. So me getting into a mindset of woe is me and poor me, is it going to necessarily help the situation, right? Yeah. By, by keeping that mindset of the glass half full, what you're really doing is you're saying, I have a big God. I have a more, more than capable God. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like the birds of the fee field, and they've never go, gone hungry. I was once young, and now I'm old, right. and I've never seen anybody that loves you <laughs> begging for bread, right? Yeah. Um, now, those are, those are principles of faith, but I think it goes beyond that. I think it goes, even if you don't have a degree of faith in a... In a, in a divinity or, mm -hmm. or form of God, I think it really gets down to the nets and bolts of the way that our mind works, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying that there's not a place to really think about the glass being half empty. Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really valuable to take time and really think about, hey, my glass is half empty, <laughs> right. and if I mess around and it gets one degree hotter in here, I'm going to be so thirsty, I'm going to drink that glass of water so quick right. that I'm going to dehydrate. <clears throat> right. I'm going to be in a spot where I'm, I'm, I don't have enough uh, water to get me through the day. So I think that there's a place for that. Right. But I think that when you're in the crisis, when you're in the fight, when you're in the middle of all hell breaking loose in your life, mm -hmm. it's important to realize that the only really way to climb out is gratitude, thanksgiving, mm -hmm. having a having not a happiness mindset, but having a joy mindset, mm -hmm. right? There's right. that old school song, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right. And it goes somewhere, oh, 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 Right? And it's not a religious <laughs> thing that I'm talking about, but I'm talking uh -huh. about gaining strength yeah. and boldness from something that's deep down inside of you. Right. That's not based on the word happiness, because happiness is associated with what happens. Mm -hmm. But it's about something inside of you that gives you a confidence that you go from being neutral, mm -hmm. right? Mentally neutral, um, as, as, as Russell Wilson would talk about, to a place where you have extreme boldness and confidence that I've done this before, mm -hmm. we've been here before, and I can perform at a really high level, I'm right. that good, right? <laughs> now, there's a difference between being overconfident, yeah. right, and being cocky, and having a mindset, you know what? All things work together for the good. I can do this. I've got a good team. Mm -hmm. I've got a wife that loves me. I've got kids that's, that, that I've got to support. Right. I've got a surrounding cast around me that we can fight it out. In my case, um, I, I'm employed by a great employer mm -hmm. who gives me a great opportunity to show up and to perform and, and climb out with him and for him and, mm -hmm. and, and together. And so you have that mindset that we can do this, mm -hmm. right? And by doing that, you put your hand to the plow a little bit different mm -hmm. than if you're in a state of defeat. Well, and I think that, um, you know, and I want to say to the audience too, those of you who are similar to me with the glass half empty, that is okay too. And I, I think what you get with the glass half empty is you still are optimistic, right? You still have the optimism, optimism, <laughs> optimistic, thank you. You still are optimistic, right? About your situation. However, you're realist, right? You're a realist. You look at the, okay, well, realistically at my situation, I think that, you know, um, you're going to look at X, Y, and Z. So you're going to sit there, you're going to lay it all on the table, so to speak. And you're going to be like, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And so, Knowledge. Uh, right. When you, so when, I think when you look at the glass half empty, you still are hopeful, but you're being a, a realist. Yeah. I think that the time to really think about the glass being half empty, though, is not necessarily, and, and you have to do what you have to do, right? There's different right. ways that we all process this mm -hmm. world that we live in. 
I'm just talking about the mindset in the battle, in the fight, right? Mm -hmm. You can only control the things you can control. And so if you allow yourself to think about the glass half empty mm -hmm. before the crisis happens, it helps you a lot more than thinking about the, the glass half empty during the crisis. Mm -hmm. But for those who do, as sometimes we, we do through you, mm -hmm. right? Because we're both experiencing it together. Uh -huh. I think it's also important that the spouse understands they don't have to think the same way that I think. Right. They don't have to process the same situation the same way that I process this mm -hmm. situation for me to know they have my back and we're going to fight out of this together. Right? right. And I think that's one of the unique things that we have with us having the, the glass half empty and half full perspectives because so you come with the more of a laid back, you know, perspective of we're we're gonna figure out, and sometimes it drives me crazy because I'm it like, does. because I'm like, how how can you sit there and be like, we'll just figure it out. We need to figure it out, and you're right. like, oh, we'll figure it out. And I'm like, no, I need a plan. Yeah, like I need to know that we have an answer and we have you know a plan in place to to get so us good. through this. And right. and you are so much more relaxed about that. And now because of that though. I will completely admit that I get very emotional and usually when a situation hits us, my emotions come out first. Sure. And so I'll have a meltdown of some mm -hmm. kind. I might just spend a day crying about what the situation, I'll feel hopeless, I'll feel overwhelmed. I'll feel like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do now? Um, but you know, it's good sometimes just to get that out of your system because when those emotions bottle up and they, they take hold of your mind, you can't process things so correctly. True. You don't think rationally. You're so caught up in those feelings that you you cannot see past your situation. Right. And so I think that's what's really great is that we don't both react that way. Mm -hmm. So you give me my moment to just have that meltdown and then I'm, I'm like, okay, give me a sure. day. I suck it back up and now the emotions are gone. I'm like, okay. And we're in the same river again. We're in the same river. Let's figure out how to fix this. Right. And I think that's the beautiful thing about the way we work with our relationship with, you know, eventually I do get to the glass house is half full, mm -hmm. but I got to process those emotions to get me there. Sure. And then I pull into my sense of uh, realism into your more laid back and we sure. figure out how, how do we fix this. And that's why it's so important to have a spouse or significant other that just the has your player. back. Yes, 100%. Yes. They know you well enough to know, okay, hey, he knows I just need to let her have a moment, let her be hysterical, sure. whatever she needs, I'm going to be here for her, and then we're going to come together. When I think that's this. beautiful. I think that one of the best ways to, and I speak predominantly to my masculine audience <laughs> with, with this statement, um, I think it's important to journal for that very yes, reason. Yes, I agree. Um, and I know as a male, that's very, very difficult. It's a challenge for me to put my thoughts down the way I general is, is on, it's on my iPad. Yeah. But it's very, very difficult sometimes to express that emotion. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's really, really important mm -hmm. to have a time when you sit down and you emotionally dump, right? Yes. You just screen dump or you just, however you handwrite it, dump. Mm -hmm. Because emotions are very powerful things, yeah. right? Emotions are what fuel us, right? My emotion of love um, which could go deeper than an emotion, but it is an emotional state mm -hmm. for our kids, for instance. Right. makes me get up and work with a joyful heart every day, right? right? My, my, my passion for justice makes me do certain things, right? right. My, my anger against injustice, mm -hmm. right, makes me do certain things, right? That emotional response. So there's only really two things that we are in control of, right? Mm -hmm. The number one thing that we're in control of is our thoughts, yes. right? So we have the unique capacity as, as the human species, um, what I would call God's highest form of creation, right? Mm -hmm. We have the unique capacity to control our thoughts, yeah. to map them out, to think about them, to dwell on them, to truly feel them and embrace them, and then to decide what thoughts are healthy for us and what thoughts are unhealthy for mm -hmm. us. What thoughts do we keep and what thoughts do we um, get rid of, right? right? And so, for me, for instance, growing up as an athlete, I knew, I knew thoughts of defeat were never healthy thoughts, right? right. It may, it, I might be in the fourth quarter and I may be down 21 points, mm -hmm. right? But I knew the thought of losing, right, and embracing that emotion and that feeling would not help me win the game, mm -hmm. right? However, the thought and the emotion of an anger that I was down right. in the fourth quarter 
and a, and a thought and an emotion of I will never be embarrassed like this ever, yeah. right? I knew that that would create a certain physical response mm -hmm. out of me that would keep performing. Even higher, at a higher level, the right. thought I've been in this situation before mm -hmm. and I'm going to be in it again sometime in the future. Yes. And I just find a magical way of always just figuring it out, mm -hmm. right? That thought has been very, very productive in my life, right? It's frustrated bosses. It's frustrated people that I was <laughs> yeah. with. It's frustrated teammates at times uh -huh. because they're like, hey, how can you not care? But everything in me was boiling with a desire to win. Not only did I care, I was obsessed with caring. Mm -hmm. I was overwhelmed with the feeling of I have to accomplish this. So my mindset has to be in this state right. so that I'm ready for good things to happen. I believe all the time people miss opportunities because they're not seeing things clearly right mm -hmm. their emotions are so overwhelming and that's yeah. why I say write them out yeah. dump them in, in, in our case right um, you don't need a diary but not that you don't <laughs> diary right but you you seem to have the unique capacity to make me sit down and listen to everything that you say yeah. and while some of it may go in this ear mm -hmm. and write out the other mm -hmm. right you don't really care it doesn't seem like you just need that yeah. emotional expression and you need to be heard and mm -hmm. felt and and validated in the way that you feel. And I think that that is so important in our lives mm -hmm. that we have those kind of teammates in our in our lives that understand, hey, my water level is rising. Right. Right? Not because I see that glass half empty, mm -hmm. but because I'm not suppressing these emotions and these emotions are being set aside like weights. Yeah. Right? And now that I've set these things aside like weights, um, I can now run with great focus and right clarity because now my water table is rising. I'm beginning to get faith. I'm beginning to get hope. I'm beginning to get a belief system because I've done a little bit of the strategic work to really strategize on how I'm going to achieve this. What am I going to do at work when when it's a new job now? COVID has changed yeah. every job that I know Everything. of, right? Yeah. And so because of that, you have to have a new strategy even doing an old job, right? Right. Well, one thing that you are really great at is um, if I take a little too long at processing my emotions, right. um, which can happen, I, I get stuck, you know, and so sometimes then I start to kind of dwell in that place and, and the negativity really starts to come out because I start to feel really hopeless and, you know, even slightly depressed sometimes sure. at the situation, depending on the severity of it. And one thing that I love that you were very good at is you were so good about pulling me out of that and saying, hey, time it's to wake not. up. Like, sure. You know, and sometimes it might seem a little harsh or a little mean, but you know, I realize what you're doing, you're, you're, you're digging me out of this hole that I've created for myself. Mm -hmm. And you're saying- I don't, I, I don't think, I don't, I don't mean to contradict you. I don't think that you've dug the hole. I think the world around you will dig a hole and throw you straight into that thing. That's so, true. so what I think that happens is, is that by being in that mindset, mm -hmm. you just don't see there's a ladder in the corner. Right. You don't notice that there's a rope. Yes. 100%. You don't notice that okay, there's a slight, there's a slight um, up angle to this side of the wall that I will, I, I'm right. not trapped. Right. I've been thrown into a hole, but yeah. I'm not trapped. So. Yeah. So I think that there's a slight difference. I think it's important that our audience recognizes that. Right. That. Just because you find yourself in a dark hole doesn't mean it's your fault you're there. Right. COVID is not your fault. Yeah. Um, COVID, 100%. and I hate to I hate to say this, COVID isn't even Trump's fault, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, depending on what you believe, conspiracy wise, it may yeah. be somebody's fault, but it's nobody that we know, right? right? And our society finds itself in a hole right now. Maybe some bad decisions and so forth that could have been handled differently, but. It's not that I'm saying to you, hey, you've dug a hole for yourself. Right. I'm saying, okay, it's time to find the rope. It's yeah, time to find the ladder, right? When, when you get stuck in the hole, whether you created it or not, so good. then you start to, you allow your emotions to take control of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we need to be in a place where we control our emotions, so good. where we don't allow them to control us. So good. And that is sometimes where a lot of us get stuck. Right. And so I'm grateful that I have you that doesn't allow me to get stuck and doesn't allow my me to um, allow the emotions to control me you remind me hey you are in control over your emotions right. let's let's pull yourself out of them let's start to see hey there's the ladder there's the rope yeah. it's not as bad as what it seems in that moment control what you can control right and in this situation it's your thoughts yes 
and it's your actions. Right. right? And it's easy, especially in, in a time like this when we're in a crisis um, economically, uh, to uh, to just let your emotions run rampant, but yeah. it, it it's You're so stuck by yourself. right. We're you in isolation. To... Yeah, we're dealing with a whole different way of society, sure. life, uh, socializing. A lot of us are yeah. homeschooling our children. Um, you know, a lot of alcoholics <laughs> out there. So I'm not just messing, but not really. Right. Um, you know, so it's just a whole new world full of yeah. just so much emotions and situations we're not used to. So good. And so we feel buried. You right. know, we, we feel like we're suffocating a lot. And so it's very easy to allow those emotions to just run rampant. But we really, especially more so in a time like this, we have to control the emotions and not allow it to control so us. So good. Now, one of the ways that you've been really, really good over the years um, is you have a plan, mm -hmm. right? We've yeah. talked about those plans. Right. I have a certain plan. Mm -hmm. I have a certain... Now, while she's being very gracious to the half full, <laughs> I have my days, right? Even they happen about once true. every six months Yeah. to where I lock myself away, yeah. right? Um, and I really am dealing with me more so than anything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, life can come at us different directions, and right. I've really discovered it's not so much the way life comes at it comes at us, but it's the way that we respond to that yeah. that comes at us that, that determines the outcome. But I get overwhelmed like anybody else, right? Yeah. And, and thank God it doesn't happen super duper often because I'm not really that emotional of a being. I'm mm -hmm. uncomfortable with it. But you've been really, really good over the years in, in helping create these for our kids, mm -hmm. for, for myself even, where you start just right. implementing, okay, this is what yeah. the next step is for you. <laughs> I, I call Groupon, your massage is set for such and right. such a time, right? You're really, really good. I think you call, you call them RAP programs, right? right? And you're, you're, you're really, you studied it, you're, 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 uh, you can get one if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, invest in one and so forth because you're certified in them. Mm -hmm. But would you unfold that a little bit? Because typically a rap program is going to involve some self care for like me. You know, I go get a massage or whatever it is. You get your nails done, your hair done. Right. So can you unfold that number one? How what a rap plan really looks like, and then the follow up question is going to be a little bit more complicated. Right. What happens when all 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 hell and ha and, and <laughs> all hell hits your rep plan because now you're not able to do it the same way you usually right. do because you might not spend thousands of dollars mm -hmm. but normally a rep plan i would assume costs a little bit i mean you got to pamper yourself a little bit to get out of it right <laughs> so can you yeah. unfold that for us a little bit and how valuable they are yeah it so a rep plan is called a wellness recovery action plan and what that is all about is self-care now self-care will look differently to every person because it's about you it's about what you need at specific times in your life to help you process what you're feeling, to help prevent you from hitting a wall. And so essentially RAP is all about uh, preventative care. Um, it can help you if you've gone past a certain point as well, but it, it's mostly there to, for you to be able to recognize, like Richard said, I can sometimes recognize in him, okay, hey, I think maybe we, we've passed the first wall, I right. see you heading for that second one, we need to pull you back, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, because right. we don't want to hit that second wall. And, um, you know, sometimes he when doesn't... When I go from a beer to tequila shots. Right. right. When we go from the beer to tequila, we're like, okay, wait a minute, we, we need to have a little different conversation sure, whatever right it might be. Right. So, you know, sometimes he doesn't always see that in himself. Um, I've been blessed to have the training uh, with my counseling degree and other courses awesome. to be able to recognize that. Mm -hmm. So it helps me to help with you, with our children, with family members to say, okay, wait a minute, I think maybe we need to pull you back a little bit sure. and remind them, hey, what's your wrap plan? Mm -hmm. What is your next stage in that? And it's really, like I said, anything you want it to be. And it's whatever helps you to find peace, whatever helps to bring you down to, to stabilize your emotions to find that neutral ground again to where you can think rationally, mm -hmm. you can process rationally, you can find that moment where you can just breathe. And sometimes Good. that's really all we need is to just be able to breathe. Absolutely. And so um, a wrap plan is so important because you create these for yourself so you know, okay, I, I'm starting to feel like mm, I'm having some struggles right now. And you can pull out your wrap plan, look at it and be like, okay, what, what is my first action? Because they're what you create them to be. What you know will work for you. And again, they're different for everyone. So that's important. So like you brought up, 
right now in the crisis that we are, a lot of people are in a financial crisis as well with, the, with right. the loss of the jobs, unemployment, not covering everything. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't even get unemployment for yeah, six months. Yeah. So it was a disastrous for a lot of people. So when you were in these, this chaos and, and, and this economic crisis, if your wrap plan maybe includes, like you said, going to get your nails done or your hair done, or maybe you're going to right. go get some drinks with some buddies. Well, now because of social distancing, restaurants not all things being open, different. things are different or financially, maybe getting my nails isn't in the budget this week. You right. know, what can I do to still self care? It's good. That is realistic mm -hmm. in this economic crisis. Right. So you don't want to just completely throw it out the door because maybe on it were things. Because it has to change. Yes. Okay. It has to adapt to you right. and to your situation. So don't throw it out the door it's because good. financially maybe I can't do some of those things that help me to relax. So you have to find another way. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, let's say going out with the girls is a thing you do once or twice a month, you go get drinks, go get dinner, you know, just to enjoy, relax. And We would love that as men. I can, <laughs> I can tell you it gives us a little space. <laughs> right. We need some space. Yeah, so do we. Uh, so, <laughs> but if that is like one of your things that you do, and that's that maybe is something that you would put on a wrap plan for yourself right. because it helps to just decompress. Calibrate. Right. You need to recalibrate your mental so recalibration. Good. Actually, Walter Bailey last week said that in, in our interview with him, that it's all about recalibrating the mind, spirit, and body. And yeah, you've good. got to reconnect those and realign so those. Powerful. And when they're off, you're off mm -hmm. and you know that you're off because you feel it so you know for example you, you want to go out to have drinks with the girls and you can't do that you know how about have a facetime chat with the girls or a zoom meeting you know that everything is done virtually now for so many options so how about you get your girlfriends together so good go in your bedroom lock the door let the hubby or whoever take care of the kids for an hour and you have your favorite drink with you, even have your dinner, and you sit and you just talk with your girlfriends over drinks and dinner. Yeah. And do it virtually because then you can still decompress, you can still talk, feel that connection with each other. You know, so good. or you know, you can't go to the spa for the day, create your own spa. You know, bubble bath, a glass of wine if that's your your thing, uh, you know, some music or read a book, quiet time, whatever that may be, and that's not gonna cost you anything, you know, except for some a bottle of wine and some bubbles. Yeah. You know, so those are realistic good. self care plan options. You know, as athletes we talk a lot about visualization. Yeah. Right. And there's been studies that have been done, and this is crazy, that tell you that, that just visualizing an act, running a race for instance. Yeah your muscles all fire the same as if, if right. you actually did it. And so this is going to sound as cheesy as cheesy can be. <laughs> but what I'd encourage you to do is visualize a day mm -hmm. at the spa. Yeah. I, would, I would encourage you to make it as cheesy as possible. So you go outside, you knock mm -hmm. on the door, they say your appointment's <laughs> been made ready, they escort you up the stairs or whatever your situation may be. They allow you to go into your spa relaxation. Mm -hmm. and this is where it's important that if you do have somebody in your corner, yeah. Now's the time to take advantage of it. Yeah. I, I believe that a lot of people fail in their relationships because they don't just have enough common sense to realize their partner needs them um, most in times of tragedy. Right. Most in times of difficulty and struggle, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of it, it's, it's easy to be a Fairweather fan, which in a lot of ways I am. I'm a Seahawks Fairweather fan, for right. instance. <laughs> I felt so stupid on Friday <laughs> because I wore my blue shirt to work my... my, my uh, whatever Seahawks shirt it is. Yeah. Uh, for the first time, I didn't even know they had a buy. That's okay. how fair weather I am. Go cool. Ravens, by the way. Um, but but I was, you know, trying to be supportive. Right. I didn't even know they didn't have a game, right? But but I say that to say, now's the time to be in your your significance corner. Right. Now is the time to support them. Yeah. Now is the time not to not to draw back, mm -hmm. but to really press in together. So yes. make it special, right? right. Help them clear out the house and they should do the same for you mm -hmm. maybe it's not the same day of course because right. you make a little bit of d big deal out of making yeah. some fudge or whatever it is together so you prepare that opportunity for mm -hmm. your significant other but let them enjoy that because that decompression yeah that mental ownership of their rap program is going to help them control their thoughts right by controlling their thoughts they'll recalibrate mm -hmm. At least this is the hope, right? Yeah, right. And then the actions that they take, which is the only other thing that they can control, 
can be significantly changed because their thoughts have changed. Right. So the power of visualization, the power so of true. your mental state saying, hey, listen, I know it may be cheesy, but I need you to play along with me. Yeah. Right. And just act as if. Now, I'm not the one that says fake it till you make it. Right. Hit that thing in the mouth with, with massive action. OK. Yeah. But you should be in a state of mental visualization where you see things improving. You see things getting back to normal. Right. You see things getting better. If not, what's your choice? Right. What's your other alternative to die in the depression of thinking things are going to get worse and worse? Right. right. And it's very easy for our minds to drift towards worse and worse. Oh, so easy. Believe me, it's yeah. it's easier to allow your mind to drift to negativity. Yes. Than it is to fight for positivity. I, I'm so one of, true. My favorite pastor in the world, Wendell Smith, who is is passed on, he used to say this: "Any dead fish can float down sea. Right. <laughs> right. It takes a living, fighting yeah. animal to fight its way up." stream to give birth to a new generation right. well the same is true of of you and i tiffany the yeah. same is true of you lionheart is that you have to fight mm -hmm. to get to a place where you give birth to the future that you want right, right. and that's not always going to be easy yeah. it's not always going to be um it's not always going to be um champagne and roses <laughs> right i wish there's going to be some difficulty along this journey mm -hmm. but if you maintain the right mindset yeah. you can not only succeed but you can flourish because you're controlling what you can control. Because really, with especially with the rap plans as we were talking about, you're recreating a feeling mm -hmm. that you get from those moments, from those actions. So even if you can't go do X, Y, Z because maybe you're in a situation where financially you can't do that, you're going to recreate those emotions and that feeling that it brings you yeah. A different way because yeah. that's really what you're trying to get you're trying to get to those feelings that bring you to a better place right so you just got to find a way to recreate them mm -hmm. you know so you know hey I, I, I've said hey baby I need a massage so here's my favorite <laughs> lotion and have that because mama needs a massage today I ain't mad at that <laughs> so, you know you just you recreate those moments and you yeah, have to special. really communicate you really, especially if you have a significant other, you really need to communicate with each other because this is a rough, rough time for everyone. And we're fortunate enough to, to really understand each other yeah. and know each other well enough to sometimes we don't even have to talk. We can we sense that in each other, but we're not afraid to have those conversations either. Be. And I, I'm not afraid to say, baby, I need you to listen to me. I just need you to zip it. Sit down and let me say what needs to be said. Because this isn't for you. Right. This is for me. Right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's for the well-being of him and my children. Healthy relationships are sometimes honestly selfish relationships. Yeah. Right. Now you can't get out of balance that way. You right. can't you can't be it can't be about Tiffany all the time and mm -hmm. it can't be about Richard all the time. Right. But you do have to have that freedom in, in your relationships. Yeah. Um, especially in times like this, to say, hey, listen. I'm having a significant moment. Yeah. If we don't turn this heat off, the boiler is going to explode. Yeah. Right? And yes. so, and th there's nothing worse than an exploded boiler, right? It's rough. So. And um, especially, too, if you're single and, and you oh, don't yeah. have a significant other, I really encourage you, please find a partner, right? Somebody that you, whether it's a best friend, a parent, anybody that you feel safe with and comfortable with, that you can lean on because right now my heart really goes out to all you single parents single individuals out there adults out there because this is really a tough time right now to physically be isolated as well as emotionally feel isolated and so i just really encourage you even if it's a facetime call with somebody a video chat however you want to do it Find somebody that you can you can depend on that you know that you can call any time or day and have that connection with somebody so they so can valuable. help you find your center again yeah. um, and help you find that balance because it's so important to, to do that especially right now. It really is, and it's it's important that you have people around you that understand that you are going to struggle. Yeah. That every day is not going to be a trip to Disneyland. Right. Right that we aren't on vacation all the time, mm -hmm. right? And as, as much as I strive to keep 
the glass half right. half full, yeah. right? And that's my mindset and that's my focus and mm -hmm. I believe good things are gonna happen for me today. Right. right? I'm gonna be the best salesperson, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the best manager, I'm gonna be the best leader, <laughs> right. right? It's gonna work out for me. I, I love how um, Dave Chappelle says, every time I get ready to go out on stage, I think to myself, this is gonna work out. <laughs> I, I love that about it, right? Because uh -huh. it's it's that mindset of success. I, yeah. I guess you can tell I'm a big comedian fan. Cat Williams, I'm I'm yeah. in that same kind of vein, right? He says, when they turn off my power, if you got <laughs> in his case, if you smoke the right blunt, right? I got 13 candles. I've been waiting to burn, right? And you don't care, right? They're gonna turn off your power. Yeah. The the lights are gonna go out. Bad yeah. things are gonna happen. In this thing called a lifetime, right? Yeah. We're not taking we're not taking our life in a small fragment mm -hmm. and saying this is my full life. Mm -hmm. We're not taking this six months of COVID and saying, oh my, my whole life is this six right, months, right? right? But it is going to be a part of your life. It's Whether gonna impact it. it's going to impact yeah. it significantly, you're going to feel it. But COVID nineteen or, or whatever it's really truly called is not going to be forever, right. right? This economic downturn isn't going to be forever, yeah. and it doesn't have to. Certainly, doesn't even have to be forever for you. There's a lot of people thriving right now. A lot of people mm -hmm. financially being extremely successful. A lot of people being emotionally successful. Yeah. I can even say there's people falling in love for the first time right, right now. There's people that are starting college careers right yeah. now. There's people that are going to get their, their law degree this year. So mm -hmm. there are still great things happening in the world that we live For in. Sure. Prayers that are still being answered or positive energy that's still mm -hmm. being responded to, okay? Yeah. So there's still wonderful things that are happening in the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. There's still wonderful things that are happening in America, right? This is still one of the greatest nations in the history of the world, right? Yeah. And I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited to be an American. I'm excited to have my First Amendment right to talk shit about everybody else's political views, right? <laughs> it's, it's wonderful, <laughs> the state that we live in, yeah. but it's difficult. Yeah. There's times of adversity that will break you. But what we have to become is resilient. Mm -hmm. Resilience is really what's going to help us become triumphant. Right. Being able to respond with the right mindset mm -hmm. all the time. I, I love it, Marcus Aurelius, what he said one time. He said that success in life, or the mindset of success in life, is more so about wrestling mm -hmm. than it is about dancing. It makes right. sense. If you're going to be successful, you got to be resilient. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people really look at life as this beautiful, poetic dance. Right. And it can be. It can be amazing. And mm -hmm. people touching their toes and spinning and ballet, right? Right. But in reality, it's a little bit of a contact sport. Yeah. Right? That's and, true. and you have to learn how to maintain your balance, mm -hmm. even in the instability of not being able to control everything. Right. And that's difficult. It's so hard, especially for people, you know, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm kind of a control freak sometimes. And so um, it's kind of that a personality, right? right so sure. it, it's definitely something that I have to work on. Um, and when we are in situations of crisis or times where things are out of our control, I, I struggle with that a lot. And it's hard. So for me, that's where the glass half empty comes into play a lot more because it's hard for me to see the bigger picture when I can't control a situation, when I'm having to depend on some unknown factor right. that's going to set the precedent for what's going to happen in my mm -hmm. life. And that is very difficult to sure. do. And one thing that I have had to learn, and we have had many discussions about this, and you've, you've helped tremendously with it, is it's all about your mindset. So true. It's about how you approach every situation in your life because, as we all know, so many things in life are going to be out of your control. Yeah. And how the majority of right. things are going to be out so of how control. you approach that is going to to have a, a chain reaction of the outcomes of that, yeah. and if you go into it already defeated, you're going to be trapped. So good. Like how are you going to ever pull yourself out of a situation if you're already defeated? So powerful. And so if you don't go into a situation with the mindset saying, "Okay, I can do this. Yeah. We can figure this out." And a lot of that too, I think, comes into play where, you know, right now a lot of people feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. So when you feel hopeless and you don't see that light, that so you, you, you feel trapped, yeah. right? You, you, it's hard to build that mindset that's going to get you out of where you are. And I think right now people are very unhappy. Right. There's a lot of unhappiness because life is so different than what mm -hmm. it was, you know, six what is months ago. Now? 
is creating an unhappiness. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's just, let's be honest. Happiness is something you create. Right. Happiness is based on monetary things, things that are, are uh, within reach that you can give yourself that's going to give you a momentary uh, happiness at something. And what people really need to find and the real root to helping pull you out of things is finding joy. So good. Because joy is eternal. Yeah. Joy is going to be forever. It is inside you that you find joy in, and it's not a monetary thing. It's not a, a temporary, temporary thing like happiness. Right. As you said, we create the happen happiness, mm -hmm. but joy comes from within. Comes so when people say you can't buy happiness, they're lying. No, you can buy happiness. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> people say money doesn't buy happiness. I say BS. I say money does buy happiness because happiness sure. is about obtaining something that gives you a temporary fix right so good you know and so i believe money 100 percent buys you happiness mm -hmm. and but what money but that's not sustainable it's not sustainable because it's temporary right what it doesn't buy is joy yeah. because joy comes from within and you can't buy joy and since this is not just a faith-based right, right right we, we definitely are in the psychology of the mind mm -hmm. what do you say to that person that says hey i don't believe in a magical god out there sure you're telling me that happiness and joy, that's extremely confusing. Mm -hmm. Joy comes from the inside. I would equate joy to character, right? It's yeah. a character trait that you've that's really good. developed mm -hmm. in your life in the sense of, yes, I, do, I believe joy is divine and I'm mm -hmm. not going to steer my opinions that way. Right. But what I'm saying is if you come from a secular mindset where you are an atheist or maybe you're, what's the other word, not an atheist, but a... Um, Agnostic. Agnostic, okay. <laughs> See, y'all thought I was stuck. Nah, I got it. I got it. You come from an agnostic, right. an atheist mindset where you're saying, hey, either there is no God or all this feeling stuff about God being connected. Mm -hmm. That's insanity, mm -hmm. right? I'm comfortable with you thinking that. That's not my business at this point. Right. What is important is that you understand joy is something that you can chisel. Yeah into who you are right. through character discipline, yes. right? And so one of the things I feel is so important before the pandemic, mm -hmm. before COVID-19, or in the midst of it all, is don't focus as much on external building things mm -hmm. as you do building internal things yes. inside yourself. Yes. Character, integrity, work ethic, joy, yeah. a sense of gratefulness. I believe that gratefulness and joy are kissing cousins. They're Gratitude linked is huge. one to the other. Yeah. So can you talk about gratefulness a little mm -hmm. bit and how that's transformed your life? Gratitude, I think, is essentially a learned trait. You know, it's not something... It's discipline. Yes, it's not something that I believe that we are born innately with. And um, it's not something mm -hmm. that is always easy to grasp. For a lot of people um but gratitude gratitude is big because that comes from within yeah. that comes from your soul from your heart it it's it's part of who you are as you're talking about your character it is part of what defines who you are as a mm -hmm. person and gratitude brings joy because you are grateful so for good. something and it's about something else it's not about you you are feeling you, you're grateful for something that was given to you you're grateful for something that was done for you you're you're, you're grateful for for someone else for a relationship yes yeah. yes it's a very selfless thing it's mm -hmm. not about you it's about somebody else and there's it's amazing how much joy you find in so helping good. other people right. when it's not about you and it's about others that is genuine joy yeah. that, that you feel on the inside. And as you're talking about a person's character, that really can define a person's character. It really can. Because when, when you can see somebody show gratitude for something and be grateful for not asking anything in return, it's right? It's not, they're not seeking to find something. Mm -hmm. They're not seeking gratification. They're not seeking anything for themselves. They are genuinely grateful to something somebody else or something else you know for what they've been given so good and that brings natural joy in their lives i think that for me i think that that is of all things one of the tragedies of being born with a silver spoon in your mouth so true yeah there it, it, that narcissistic mm -hmm. perspective of the world that you live in right yeah. um 
I can't say that I ever was born with a golden with a silver spoon <laughs> in my mouth. Right. Um, but I think that that sense of of not that I was ever starving either, mm -hmm. right? That's not the world that I lived in either. But that sense of gratefulness for that chocolate cake. Right. That sense of gratefulness for someone visiting you or caring mm -hmm. for you or giving you a gift. I think that sense of appreciation. Yeah. When you have nothing. Yes. It's such a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. I think it's a gift that we give ourselves by understanding that the world is full of people that care. Yeah. Understanding that there is a world full of selfless people, selfless people. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of selfish people. Right. Yeah, there's plenty of narcissists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's plenty of people where they are their only priority. Yeah. But the world is full of beautiful people that it's do so beautiful true. things, yeah. that sacrifice and give, and their sense of joy comes from giving. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, to me, an insane level of gratefulness has been a real real fuel, t fuel tank to me, been a real driving engine for all the things that I've achieved in my life. Mm -hmm. See, for me being born with, with broken legs, doctors telling me I'd never walk, no less run. That mindset, for instance, when I started playing sports and I ended up being decent at it and then people started cheering for me, it was never something that I took for granted. It was something that I was always grateful for. I, I, I developed a, a craving for the benefits of that gratefulness, yeah. right? Um, and so I appreciated it every step of the way. It was grateful every step of the way, and it energized me to perform at such a much higher level than naturally I probably would have been able to yeah. because I was so appreciative and so thankful for my coaches. And I would hang on every word that they would say because to me that opportunity was never going to come. I was never going to have that chance in life. Mm -hmm. And because I did receive it because of the small gift that I had and the work ethic that I had and the yeah. hard work that I put in, I became overwhelmingly grateful for it. Yeah. And that gratefulness became a smile on my face that people mm -hmm. recognized, yeah. they appreciated it. And so, you know, it was never so much because I scored touchdowns, although I was good at that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I I don't denounce my gifts or anything that way, but right. it was because reporters liked to interview me, right? They really <laughs> did. I, I made people feel good. <laughs> Because I was so grateful. Yeah. Why are you talking to me? Yeah. I was so grateful. You know, I was so grateful for my coaches that I said my coaches' names in every interview. Right. I was so co grateful for my teammates that I said my teammates' names in every interview. So yeah. people would wake up the next day, and yes, I was thrilled to have my name in the paper. Mm -hmm. But they would see their name in the paper because I was giving them praise. Right. And I was <laughs> thankful for them. And I think that an insane level of gratefulness mm -hmm. is really what will fuel... America through this up through this moment. I know that they they have all kinds of slogans that they've got and, right. and people are living off of. I love the hope of, of Obama, right? Mm -hmm. um, make America great, not so much, you know. But yeah. but because I don't come from that. When was America great? I come right. from that mindset, right? But yeah. but to me, a gratefulness. Who, whatever president wins, I'm grateful that I live in this great this great nation, right? Yeah. I'm grateful for the neighbors that I have. I'm grateful for the people that I have a chance to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful, red, yellow, black, and white, and brown, that we have an opportunity to be great Americans and make America truly something special, right? Yeah. And with all this chaos of COVID-19, I'm thankful for people in our lives that can help us economically do wonderful things, amazing yeah. things. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for friends that don't give up on us. I'm thankful for an opportunity to pay off debt. You know yeah. So I think that if, if you would help me join in that mindset of thankfulness mm -hmm. and gratitude, you'll find your life improving. Even in the middle of the chaos, you'll find your thing, your situation getting better because peace dwells inside you. Yeah, that's so true. Just a little spot in their heart that they can yeah. Help grow. I remember the Grinch of Christmas, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember that saying where it just began to grow and yeah, grow his and heart grow. Grew. Let your heart grow. Yeah. Lionheart audience, we talk about going hard and we talk about doing tough things and being tough individuals. Mm -hmm. But let gratefulness grow in your heart and you'll find out that it's Christmas every day. That you can go from being a Grinch in the middle of hard times and focus yeah. on all the wrong things to really having an amazing life. You know, and don't let COVID 
dictate the rest of your life for you. So good. You know, because this is a temporary thing. And remember that it's temporary and you can change that. And while it is out of our control right now, some of the things that are happening, remember what you are in control of, and that is you. And you're in control of how you feel and how you react. And your responses to this situation will be what gets you out of this. Because there are times where we are all gonna feel overwhelmed and so we're gonna feel stressed and we're gonna feel depressed, we're gonna feel like you're just ready to give up because it feels like it never ends, you know, day after day. But find your center. Find that platform of neutrality and, and, and rest in that. Yeah, build from that. Right, build from that. And whenever you feel that, you know, you're losing that control, take it back because you are in control over you. And that mindset is so important yeah to how we are going to respond so and don't let COVID, don't let what's happening with our government, don't let any of that take that away from you. Don't let it strip it from you because if you lose that, you are going to find yourself in a box and you're going to find yourself defeated. So don't become defeated. Set your mindset to know that you can defeat whatever comes your way. So good. So find that center, find what in life brings you joy. What are you grateful for? And these moments where it, you, you're, you're sad because you can't go do what you normally do or, or you're, you feel like, I, you know, hey, I lost a vacation this year. I can't go do this. I can't go right, do that. Right. And it sucks. And we all have, everybody has felt that at some point throughout this year. You know, so instead of feeling depressed or down of what you couldn't do or what you can't do, focus on what you can do and focus on what you do have. And so, I know in those moments I think about how grateful I am for you and how grateful I am at our crazy children who drive me nuts, <laughs> you know, seriously. But <laughs> I look at those moments where, you know, Jack says, I love you, Mommy. You know, and Hannah's giving me hugs and kisses and those moments of cuddles, and I'm so grateful for our beautiful children. They're amazing. And and finding those moments of joy because that's that's true joy. Yeah. Those are true happiness, and you know, and I am so grateful for those moments. So when when you're feeling lost and you're feeling that it, the world just seems like a dark place, I promise you, you have joy in there somewhere and sometimes it takes a moment to really think about it but sometimes make so a sorry. list make a list of it if, if you're struggling with that and just really write out the things that you're grateful for and the things that bring you genuine joy yeah. because those moments and those things are going to help you be able to have the right mindset of what you're fighting for so good and that way you can just take on all these challenges and even if you can't control some things you can control others, so control what, you, what you're capable of doing. And, and, and find that inner strength that you have. So good. Lean on your partners, lean on family members, whoever you have in your life. Find that support. Continue to, don't let you lose your character. Don't let that be taken from you in, in the time of this. There's a lot of angry good, people good, right good. now. There's a lot of um, racism and sexism and a whole lot of ugly going on in the world right now. Don't let that consume you. Don't let that change your character and who you are. Don't let that take your integrity from you. Be the person that you are, are true to yourself and rebuild the character and stick with that because that's gonna help get you through this. It's good. So good. I'm proud of you. Thanks, baby. I wanna just tell you, life is short. Yeah. Enjoy it. Right now, if you ain't got the money to go do what you normally are doing or you're thinking, you know what, I should be wise in a situation like this. Maybe it's not even for yourself you should be wise. Maybe you have enough and you've been diligent and you've saved and you've got three months and six months and maybe you have a year. Maybe you're already into retirement and you control it. Maybe you're just wise enough to keep saving money and not spending it like, like you could because you don't know what happens in the world and you might want to be able to help somebody else. That's a sense of gratitude. And you should, we're grateful for you as well. In your situation, in your, your condition, wherever you might be. Life is short, enjoy it. And one of the ways that you're gonna enjoy it is just take a step back. Don't worry about spending money. Just spend a childlike attitude. Just be childish a little bit. Get into your imagination, get creative, um, and uh, love one another.
So true. Yeah. I don't know if that was your final thought. It was, sure was a good thought. <laughs> it pretty much you was. Share. You know, um, we're definitely grateful for you um, at the Lionheart Institute, our, our followers. You know, it means the world to us to have you watching our videos, supporting us. Uh, really you know, it just it does. Every time you guys leave a comment, it means so much to us because we we do this because we want to make a difference and we want to make a difference in your lives. We want to share our knowledge and the wisdom that we have gained from experiences. We want to be able to impact people and, and really help. So it means a lot to us that you're watching and that you're listening. And we, we're just really, really grateful for you. And we, we hope that you guys continue to, you know, subscribe to our channel, continue to listen and share our videos with other people that you feel that this could really help and impact them because it, it, it matters to us. It, you matter to us. That's so we, right. we really thank you and we are very grateful for you as well. God bless you guys. I'm Richard Thomas. I'm Tiffany Thomas. Thank you for being with us here at the Thomas Table Talks, the Lionheart Institute podcast. We'll see you next time.